You are listening to Apple Teenies, the podcast. Get your drinks, get your passion, get fired up. It's now time to unleash the fury. Hey guys, we are back. Damn, it's we're doing another show. I mean, they haven't. We are. Canceled. We're, we're with this number four. Number they four haven't canceled this. They haven't canceled this yet. And we actually right. have people downloading, which is phenomenal. I can't believe that people actually want to hear what we have to say. Well, not how many we, of those? Are, how many of those are you and Maria? Because I've downloaded like six times. Probably. Uh, at least ten. Okay. Right. Cool. <laughs> so, and we're at what? That's sixteen, and what do we've got? Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. <laughs> so, Probably my mom. Uh, yeah, yeah. My mom, she's not talking to me right now, so yeah, we're not. <laughs> so look at this. Look at look at this uh, this mustache you got going here. The last time you had the whole Santa vibe happening. I did. I did. I did. But, you know, Santa vibe, the Santa had to go. So, yeah. Gotcha. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I have to say, you're not, you're not going to like this. This is one of those, uh, one of those takes that you're going to be like, hmm, I don't know. But, you know, Tom Selleck has been... The gold standard on mustaches for what forty five years? He has been, yes. It's been a good run, but I think I, I gotta say, I think his his uh, heir apparent has has come onto the scene. It's uh, it's Rooster from Top Gun Maverick. Okay, fair I enough. I think that's gonna be the new the new uh, it mustache. Fair enough. Rooster is the man. That was a great movie, by the way, Dan. It I was. know you saw it, man, and I I was just I had fun the whole movie the whole time. It was, I was it was in the theater. Pitch perfect all the way through. Um, yeah. I thought, and, and it was just so much fun and I'm, it made just a truckload of money. So I can't imagine it's going to be another 30 years before we get another Top Gun. I, I think they're going to do another one and they're going to do yeah. another one pretty quickly. Uh, I know because of COVID they had to postpone a lot of stuff, but I'll tell you what, man, it, it was a great time in the theater. You got to see it in the theater just to experience it all. And in many ways, I think it's better than the first one. Oh yeah, it's way better. Uh, just yeah. story, um, performances, the the stunt. They actually did the the flying. You see the the guys coming out of their seats as they do the inverted move, and it's mm -hmm. it's nuts. Um, and and I'm glad they didn't they didn't dump it to streaming, you know, and let HBO Max or Paramount Plus, you know, that they waited and did it right. Yeah, uh, it's, it, so. you know, Tom Cruise is at the top of his game and hopefully, you know, he stays there for a while and we get to see some more great films from him and his company. So. Yeah. You know. But you're like this, uh, Jack is now he's running around. He's trying to grow a rooster mustache. Very cool. And, Very cool. And right now it's, it's not looking good. I was like, you look like someone who has to go around to the neighbors and introduce yourself because you're on a list. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's not coming in very well. Look, it ain't easy because I couldn't grow a mustache until I was around 30. So maybe, mm -hmm. you know, he might have to wait a few years, but he'll get there. He'll get there. Right. So. All right, man. We got a great guest today, Dan. I don't want to I don't want to keep him waiting because, yeah. you know, I know you were stoked, really stoked about this whole I'm thing. I'm very stoked. I, I, I might be uh, foreshadowing a little bit here with my with my shirt. That's I didn't I didn't go full jersey here, you know, but um, I, I'm foreshadowing with my shirt. It's, it's not Hugh Jackman. It's not Hugh Jackman. Right. Okay. <laughs> Yet. 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 Exactly. We'll get Hugh Jackman on here as soon as we can. But uh, yeah, let's jump right in, man. Let's get to hey, it. Let's, Why let's, don't... Uh, let's go to Jeremy real quick. Take it away, Jeremy. Apple teenies with Ken. Apple teenies with Ken. Oh, yeah. Apple teenies with Ken. Oh, 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 oh. Appletini's with Ken, oh, oh, yeah, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Appletini's with Ken, Appletini's with Ken, oh, yeah. All right, we're back. I'll All tell you right, what, man. Today. What's that? I'll tell you what, I love that theme. I love it. I do love that theme. <laughs> I don't even care if we change it. I don't even care if we update it. It's, it's just so good. It is. All right, you ready, man? I am. Have at So our guest today, Wes Johnson, uh, who said we can just call him some random guy, but I think he deserves a little bit more than that. Uh, Wes Johnson's been seen in films such as John Waters, A Dirty Shame, The Invasion, For Richer or Poorer. His television appearances include Veep, The Wire, Homicide Life on the Streets, and he was a series announcer for America's Most Wanted. Um, he was a morning personality on WHFS, Wolfman Jack's comedy sidekick. He sang on The Dr. Demento Show wrote and drew a daily comic strip for the Washington Times and voices over 60 different video game characters. And 
Wes is the longtime announcer for the NHL's Washington Capitals, the voice of NHRA racing, and the City Open Tennis Tournament. So, welcome to the show, Wes Johnson. Yeah, here we go. There he is. There he is. Hey, gents. Hey, how you Wes? doing? We're good. We're good. Thank you for joining us today, man. We appreciate it. I had to bring my uh, A game with the, sh- the shirt because, I mean, Dan, you've got your cap sweater there, and, and I see you're rocking the X Men. So, uh, in honor of you guys, I am wearing my uh, Nicholas Cage Massive Talent T-shirt today. Nice. This is this is to honor both of you guys here today. So, oh, this is an unbearable much. weight that you have to take care of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the unbearable the weight unbearable that I carry weight, around. Man, talent. <laughs> And by the way, the mustache you're talking about there earlier, I think it's very Sam Elliott. That's kind of like, yep. you know, yeah. Thank I you. expect to see you at a bowling alley talking about the dude. That would be that would be <laughs> outstanding. Maybe they do, you know, a, a, a dude too. <laughs> and yeah. I we are trying really hard to get Ken connected with that whole Yellowstone 1886 group, you know, because he belongs right in there. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I look at the the pictures from uh, the the shots. I can't wait to see your film, the the western that you're doing, and it's like you've you've just gone back in time. You know, it it really is, and, and that. Must Mustache, it does have this. Now, Ken, do you have any daughters? I do. I have three. Three daughters. Three. That is the mustache you need to have when guys come to your house to pick up your girls yeah. because it has that good, the bad, and the ugly kind of do <laughs> kind of feel. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does. That's true. Yeah. So, you know, when they show up, I just stare at them. Oh, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. that's it. That's the uh, Western stare. You never, you know, guys, they tip their hat. That's as good as getting a big hug. That's the right. emotion you're going to get out of that situation. And the guys come, they know. They look at you and you've got that look in your eyes that's like, yeah, I've been you. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> 10 p.m. sharp. <laughs> oh, man. Could you do the voice, though? I'll record you, and then <laughs> I won't say anything. I'll just play that. I'll just play what you just that, said. That's it, it is it's actually the voice of Ken's mustache is played by. <laughs> the voice of Ken's it. mustache. That would be my <laughs> ultimate credit. All right. I'm, I'm already writing these ideas down because uh, we're going we're gonna to shoot a short film about Ken's mustache and the voice of Ken's Excellent. mustache. Thank you. You're going to play, you, play the voice. You say the ultimate credit, but I feel like you. We were talking about this before the show, Ken and I. You, you have one of the greatest character names I've ever seen oh, yeah. on IMDb. In from a dirty John Waters. Shame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from a dirty shame. Your character is Fat Fuck Frank. So that is yeah. by far the greatest name I've ever heard. I would love a name like that in any film that I've ever been in. <laughs> it's wonderful when you can pick up the phone from a casting director and they're on the other line saying, we'd love for you to be our fat fuck. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. That was Pat, right? Pat Moran's office? That, yeah, yeah, it was Pat. Uh, Pat Moran's office calling up and, and, and telling me that. And that was one of those things. You know, you guys know that when you audition for things, you've got to walk away when it's over. Mm-hmm. You you go in, you give it the performance because it may be the only time you ever perform that character. And then you walk away because cool guys don't look back at explosions. You just right. forget about it. You let it go. I made the mistake because we had the call back on this one and things felt really good. And I made the mistake of wanting it. Mm-hmm. I, and I and it, it was a cardinal sin. And I remember they, it was a couple days. I didn't hear anything. And I'm sitting there with my wife and I said, I I screwed up. I wanted this one. And now I'm bummed. I said, I, you know what? She said, I'm going to go out. She was going to go do some grocery shopping. I said, I'm going to lay down and take a nap. I'm going to take a nap. I'm going to rinse this away. And when I wake up, I will have forgotten about it. I'll allow myself to feel bad, take a nap. When I wake up, it was done. when I woke up, it was there was a message on the machine that said, give us a call. And that's when they asked me. And I thought to myself, I need to take a nap now after every <laughs> audition. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good plan. That's a good thing. You know, just. Do you have, do you have superstitions that you do? Uh, you know, I'm very similar to you. Like I go in, you know, and I look at it now because I did that with um, Transformers. I put way too much mm-hmm. pressure on myself for that. Yeah. And I didn't get the role and I went in and it was the worst audition I ever had in my life because I put you too tightened much, up. Yeah. I put too much pressure on myself. And now when I go into an audition, it's I'm going in, I'm giving them the best that I got. And once it's done, 
That's it. Mm-hmm. I'm walking away. If I get the job, bonus. But that's right, it. right. Walk away. Your your job your job is to bring that character to life in that moment and yeah. be happy with yourself. Yes, that's yeah. True. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I've I've um, I've I can think of all the many different ways I've screwed auditions up over the years. However, I do know that uh, back in the days when we'd go to the Pat Moran casting offices, the one over there in uh, in Fells Point, mm-hmm. after every audition. I would go over to uh, Brick Oven Pizza oh. and order myself a nice slice of their white pizza. Yeah. And it became a ritual. It, it, even if I, I, if I didn't get the job, it didn't matter. I got myself some pizza. Uh, and I also got myself to the point where I was eligible weight-wise to play Fat Fuck Frank <laughs> after all the different auditions over the years. Well, that was so, a big, um, like, what was it, 20, 2018 or 2017? You, you kind of, you, you did a, a farewell tour to food. And, I did. Uh, and you, you know, I was watching you go through this, um, through this change of life, I guess, on, on Facebook. And congratulations. And that's, uh, you know, I, I, not too much on, pounds I lost. Yeah. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. Yeah. So, uh, and, and the thing is, it was like a farewell to food at the time. But as it turns out, it, it was a huge lifestyle change for a year or two. And and I it is a lifestyle change for my entire life. But I can now eat a lot of those foods that I ate before. It's just moderation. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, you can eat anything you want as long as it's not all you eat, as long as you mostly take care of yourself, you can have some nice days where it's, uh, I've actually gone down to Mario's. There's this place, Mario's in Arlington, that serves the biggest, nastiest sub with uh, steak and cheese and fried egg and coleslaw and all these things on it. It, it really is the equivalent of cutting Mike Tyson off in traffic. You're going to get knocked out cold. So... <laughs> yeah, it's it's a delightful... I've gone there and instead of getting a 12 inch i'll get like a six inch cut it in half eat three inches of it go home and pass out um and just don't don't go nuts like i used to yeah Uh, yeah so yeah it's 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 cool and i'm and now i found myself in a position guys where i've had to go and, and do a lot of different jobs just so that i will eventually have a reel that shows me looking the way i do now as opposed to the way i did then people look at my old demo reel and they're like why are you sending me somebody else's demo reel? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Your your old demo reel's got some really great stuff on it. So, yeah. I, you mm. know, I hope you keep some of those things because some of those things are fantastic. So Yeah. Um, yeah. I throw some of them in there, uh, you know, and just because if I'm going to have somebody else's stuff that doesn't really look like me anymore on mm-hmm. there, I'm going to toss in a little De Niro, a little Al Pacino, whatever I can just to spice things up. <laughs> Right. That's great. <laughs> oh, and by the way, when you were talking about Mario's, I was writing that down. Arlington, Virginia. I need to. Go oh there. yeah. You know, I know notes. all the great places. Celebrity Deli and Falls Church. They have a sandwich named after me. We need to get down what? there. You guys. Yes, there's a West Johnson sandwich. You guys got to go down and get yourself your own sandwich because there's nothing better than inviting somebody to eat you and mean it. <laughs> <laughs> I, that would be. That would be. Amazing! That really uh, would be. That would be. I'd say. See, what, what see sandwich what? would you want though? If you if you chose your sandwich, my sandwich is roast beef, uh-huh. uh huh, um, Munster cheese, coleslaw, Russian dressing, grilled sourdough, and if you get it with a fried egg, that's going full Johnson. Oh, the full Johnson. Yeah. yeah. So, what would your sandwich be? Oh, go ahead, Dan, because I got to think about this one. Oh man, I don't know. I I'm um I'm not crazy experimental um with with foods, but I'd I'd think it had to be there'd have to be bacon involved. Um it had to be like a just a baller BLT with grilled cheese BLT with an egg or something like that. You just want a you want a B E T a bacon, egg, and tomato. There you go. Right. Bacon, egg, and tomato. But what do we call it? The Franco? Yeah, I think that's probably yeah. Yeah, but we got to make it the note Franco with a K. Mm. With a K. Franco exactly. is it's Franco with a K. Franco with a K. That's the sandwich name. Franco with a K. So that's pretty cool. Uh, oh my God! I would say because you know I love French dip, French dip sandwiches yeah. with the yeah. I love the French dip, man. So anything As that's you. got beef and provolone on it would be mm-hmm. you know it would be a good sandwich. 
Provolone is one of the cheeses of the gods. It is. It's so good. Yeah. Except on pizza. I don't I don't get the whole Lito's pizza with provolone. I, yeah, I that's, a, that's that. a sandwich cheese. That's not a pizza cheese. Agreed. Where do you guys stand on pepperoni on, I mean, uh, uh, pineapple on pizzas? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. I'm I okay with it. away from it as I can. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay fan. with it. No, not, no, but no anchovies for me. Yeah, no anchovies. <laughs> Most certainly no anchovies. Little, you put a little fishy on that pizza, that's your pizza. Mm. That is not my pizza. <laughs> I, I will say, though, I, I do love a good clam pie. And there's one in Staten Island, New York that I get. Are you, is that a euphemism? No, yeah. it's clam. No, it's not a euphemism. <laughs> they put clam on the pie, and it's really good. It's clam pie. So, so that you got to be careful of the things you them? say. I was in a John Waters movie about sex addicts, and so anything you say <laughs> can sound yes. dirty. We discovered on that set that there anything you say can sound absolutely filthy in the right context. Uh, that was such a fun movie, man. I auditioned for it. I didn't get the role in it, but but you know, which, just, which role? Which role did you audition? Oh for? my god, I was the mailman. It was the mailman. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. His priority package. Yep. Yeah, I auditioned yeah. for that role. Go. Didn't get it, but you know, I still enjoyed watching the film. And the guy who got the role was fantastic in it. So you know, uh, yeah. and John Waters Jonas. movies are always great. Yeah. Oh, the the fun thing about the John's movies is that I mean, first of all, you're going to think John Waters, and you're thinking, oh my god, it's got to be so out there and everybody's gotta be out there it is was the most fun on a set i've had since i was in like high school drama you know back in the days when you're in high school drama and we're all like hey kids let's put on a show you know this was the most fun i'd had since anything like that and being able to hang with folks like uh, tracy ullman and there i we we go out to john waters house for read through for one thing Mm-hmm. And you're at John. You're in John Waters' living room, which is odd enough. But there you are, <laughs> sitting on a couch. I'm sitting on a couch, and to the left of me is Chris Isaac, and Tracy Ullman's over here doing this whole routine and yelling at him about masturbating, and I'm in between them, and it's the most awkward. It's like mom and dad are fighting, and it's weird. It, it felt <laughs> so strange, and uh, I do recall. That when we went to film this movie, it was during a, a huge tornado or hurricane had come through and knocked out power and water for like a week and a half ahead of time. And I'm thinking, I'm going to be the great unwashed going to this thing. So I took the family uh, the day before we did this and we went up to Hershey Park, went to Hershey, Pennsylvania, took them out there, went on flume rides, water rides. I figured at the very least, we're going to get splashed. It was some kind of water, even if it's secondhand before I come back. And when we came back, all the lights in the house were on, so it was wonderful. But after this, Tracy Ullman asked me if she can get a ride back to Flight 3. And all I'm thinking is, did I clean the car? Did I clean the car? You know, because I'd had these kids coming back from an amusement park. And you know what that's like. If you ever go to the Benji's Mm drive-in up above Essex, and we'd go there and take the kids there all the time. And there's something about the smell of a car that kids have been eating and watching movies in for seven, eight hours and that drive home. And I just kept thinking, am I subjecting Tracy Ullman to some kind of strange family hazmat situation? (laughs) And it (laughs) turned out I I had cleaned the car. So there was, (laughs) yeah. Dodge that bullet, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember That's the whole level of anxiety I never even considered as one of the actors asking for a ride back somewhere. So now I'm going to carry that with me. Like, oh, God, I need to clean the car before I quit that now, too. I don't, want, I don't want to embarrass myself. But do you remember Flight 3? Yeah, I love Flight 3. It was yeah. a great studio, man. It's a shame that that, that, uh, that changed. I, I, I don't it, know if it's anything All now. studios. We used to have all yeah. these wonderful studios, and now everything is in our home. I've got my... My box right here, you know, mm-hmm. my my TARDIS of of sound, yep. and uh, we we have all these things now in our homes. Whereas, it, it, sure, driving out to a studio or going somewhere to do something, sometimes you have to deal with traffic and all. But there was nothing better than going to a professional studio yeah. and and getting in those situations. I miss Flight Three. Uh, I miss all of those places and. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes technology advancing is not necessarily the warmest, 
you know? Yeah. Yeah. So here's a quick question, right? So now mm-hmm. we're living in post COVID times, you know, um, yes. and we don't have to, for the most part, go in for an audition. We don't have to wear pants. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> do you prefer if it was, you know, if you had your choice, would you prefer to be in the room with the producers and the director or would you prefer the way it is now? I mean, there are benefits to both. I, I really believe so. There are benefits to both, but I, I actually like going in and meeting uh, producers and things of that sort, and especially the callback sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, w- w- the first auditions are generally with uh, staff at the, uh, sure. the casting agencies, things as well. When you finally get in a room with somebody who's making a decision and they start giving you some ideas on how to change or give me a little of this or give me a little of that, and you start to hone in on what they're actually looking for, that's the kind of feedback you're never going to get when you're just sitting in your own home and filming something, yeah, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, that being said, I'm glad we have that technology and I'm glad that it's available. Uh, never used to be. Remember, you look at all the uh, things that are available to people now. You've got YouTube stars. And in the day, we could never have imagined anything. You want to do a show? You'd have to put on a show. I did stage shows. We'd get a whole cast together and you'd rehearse and you'd get props and sets and sound and audio and you get an audience and you bring people in. And uh, where's all that gone? Yeah, yep. absolutely. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd really enjoy the in-person stuff. And Carlin Davis just recently called me in to go in and I hadn't been yeah. in, in over two years and it was amazing. And I was just like, next wow. time that happens, you give me a call and we're going to go. Uh, we're going to go to the Celebrity Deli. OK, uh, uh, outstanding, yeah. because I was out there. I had to drive out there. And, you know, fortunately, the traffic wasn't too bad this time. Sometimes it takes me two and a half hours to drive 45 minutes this time. Yeah, this time. It depends. You know, sometimes it's yeah. two and a half hours. Other times it's 45 minutes just based mm-hmm. off of D.C. traffic. You know it well. We all know it well. Yeah. And, and when you go out into D.C. or you go somewhere else, what are the places that you do you have little places that you go to uh, when to, you're out to, there to go eat and to, to see? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Things, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, when I used to go down the central casting right there, there was a little coffee shop right. there right on the corner that I used to hit yeah. every time before I went or after I was done, I would hit that little coffee shop. Now, I, I can't remember the name of it, but I know exactly where it was. I would I would park in the market. Casting. Yeah. It might as well be Central Perk. <laughs> yeah. So, but that, you know, I haven't been to Central Casting in forever. No, you know? no. no. <clears throat> and parking, I remember, used to be a nightmare there. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Find something you see in a place to park and you're going around and around the block several times. I would park at the market there because I always found parking at the market. And then I'd walk the three blocks or four blocks or whatever it was. But uh, I would park at the market, go, hit the coffee shop on the way audition and then go back and then there were places around the market where you could eat lunch or do that and i would you know pick a different spot or whatever every time it was awesome. well this is great advice coming very very late ken i know sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> i apologize that's okay no it's very cool i yeah, so um, here's the thing though because of technology because you were able to put things together what i love is that you guys have actually gone out, I mean, and you're making your own films. You're putting things together. You are really, you are Judy Garland and uh, Mickey Rooney. I'm not sure who is who in that relationship, but you guys are actually out making your own stuff. And it's not, it's good. It's well, good you, stuff. Thank you. Yeah, thank so, you. I mean, it's, it's amazing to see. And uh, I do remember, Ken, uh, seeing you once upon a time in a one of the early 48-hour film festivals. Mm-hmm. And I forget which one it was, but I remember very much seeing you in this film. And I thought to myself, this guy has re- – this is really good presence. And I, I, I want to say I've been watching a show on TV recently, and I realized there's a, there's a, a powerful stillness within you. That Thank is you. not sti- that is not stillness, mind you. There's a lot going on, but it appears to be a powerful stillness. And the only person actor that recently I saw and I equated it to, and I thought this is the same thing, is uh, J.K. Simmons. Wow, oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank yeah. you. And uh, I, I don't know if you guys have seen Night Sky yet. 
I have not. not yet. No. But it's, I'm going to uh, write that down. Yeah, him and Sissy Spacek. And uh, uh, it's just, you watch him and you see this internal life, this, this character that you just know and love. And I was talking to my wife and I said, J.K. Simmons is interesting. Because the first time I remember seeing him, I hated him mm-hmm. with a passion. He was in Oz. Yes. He was yes. the most disgusting. He was despicable. Disgusting. He yes. was despicable and disgusting and awful. And you believed that's who he was. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yep. You looked yep. at this. And now I look at him in Night Sky. And he's just this character that is there's so much love and heart within him. And you think, how is this the same man? Yeah. It's amazing. He's like, so I call them the that guys. And yes. every now and then a that mm-hmm. guy becomes a J.K. Simmons or a Steve Buscemi or, you know, but, right. but there's so many of them who you never, I mean, we know because we're in the industry and we, we, we those are the people that we look to as the, you know, like, like um, is it Stephen Root? Um, that guy just does yeah. just amazing work. Stephen Root is amazing. My, yep. One of my and, favorites, James, James Crom- Cromwell. Yeah. 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 I think he's fantastic. That'll too. do. That'll do. But every now and then you get you get a couple of those that that just that they 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 transcend the that guy and they become the the archetype. William H. H. William H. Macy yep. is one of those guys who have transcended. But do you remember J. T. Walsh? Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. J. T. Walsh was one of that guys. Yeah. But he also was on his way to becoming one of our preeminent. I mean, he was one of our preeminent actors, but noticeably so when uh, he was taken very early and and yep. that. Things like that hurt. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, like um, Philip Seymour Hoffman. You know, he yep. was, he was, mm. he could be anybody, you know? And yeah, he, he just could. Had that. So, yeah, it was such a shame. Um, you know, uh, Wes, we like to ask these questions on every show uh, because, you know, we want to talk about the success of people and you've had some great success in your career. Uh, but we like to ask what. What is the thing that gets you up every morning? What is the thing that you are passionate about this this entertainment industry and the career that you have? And and how does that translate into your success? Um, the only thing that gets me up every morning is this giant beaker full of coffee for one, <laughs> and 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 protein drink. But uh, <sighs> uh, as far as as far as the the business is concerned, uh, it's just something I've always loved and i it's like breathing it's like asking somebody why do you get up and breathe in the morning Mm -hmm. Uh, there's so many things that we do and that we have done to keep the ghost you know i always say that if if you're a performer you have to have two jobs there's one to feed the body and then there's one to feed the soul and if you don't have both of those things going on in your life then you're going to be empty something's wrong Mm -hmm. um i've spent a lot of time over the years and as everybody knows you don't make a living as an actor so much as it it feeds the soul it feeds who you are and the success comes from sticking at it and going after it for years and years and years i have friends who went out and got their degrees and got jobs and had families and built things up who are now looking at me and saying boy i wish i was doing what you're doing it's like you know I felt the same way back, uh, you know, 20 years ago when, you know, when you were eating food on the regular. Uh, <laughs> right? Exactly. Wow. You know, I wish I was eating food on the regular. Yeah. Boy, that would have been nice. But um, but but I never stopped thinking, you know, people say you got to have a safety net. Yeah. My feeling is, is when you're when you're doing the kind of things you love, you just keep climbing up the ladder. You keep going because there is really no safety net. There's really no safety net, not in what we do because we have to do it. We love performing. We have to do this. And so you keep climbing and you, you get a little somewhere and you get a little somewhere and it's incremental. It seems like you're not moving. It seems like you're not doing anything, but if you stop and take a look down and see where you started from, you'll realize even if you did have a safety net at one point, that's a long way to drop. Yeah. You know, uh, so you just keep going. For me, I love, we ju- I just did a role the other day that I get to disappear into. 
and and I talk, I, I do classes now. I teach video game voice acting classes. Awesome. And really what I tell them is that these are acting classes. A lot of people are afraid of emotion. In this world, you have to be. We're very afraid. We don't want to be hurt. We, we protect ourselves. We shield ourselves. So the job of an actor is to open that plating up remove that plating, allow the feelings, the real emotions to be there. So in order to inhabit a character, yeah, you're using a spark of yourself, of your real life, but you have to live within that person. So if they're feeling pain or joy, uh, sadness or love, those things you have to really feel because if you don't really feel them, if, you don't, if you're not true to the emotions and living within that moment, they're going to sense it. You've sensed it when you watch films or plays, or listen to mm -hmm. a book on tape, or listen to a video game. When somebody is giving you just the surface, yeah. you can tell because you become distanced from that character. When yep. somebody really believes it, when somebody is not just believing it, but living it, you will live it right alongside them. So in order to, to make this long story very short, acting, acting is living life not just yours, but everything to the fullest. And who wouldn't want to do that? So I wake up every morning looking for the opportunity to feel, to experience, to live. And you can do that within any of those roles. I love that. Me too. I'm going to steal it. No. <laughs> <laughs> so isn't, isn't that the, the uh, highest form of flattery? Wait, you know, absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> So I'm going to steal it. I'm going to use it in my acting workshops coming up. So Please, please do. Hey, one of these days, one of these days when we do the acting workshop, especially if we do one at the convention, we got to get you out, Ken, and get you out to do some of these things. And, sure. And talk to folks. Because I really, truly believe the only difference between video game voice acting and acting is that one of them's in a video game. Yeah. It's, it's all agree. just acting. Yeah. And, and you know what the, the funny thing about acting is? You don't want people to see your acting. Right. And, and, and with uh, vi reading scripts, you don't want them to hear you reading. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. these things that we say, voice acting, it's not about the yeah. voice. It's about the acting. And when the acting comes in, you don't want to see it. Yeah. I, I call it the, and when I teach my workshops to people, I call it the invisible art. Because if you see mm -hmm. it, it's not good. That's right. So, That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> it is. Never it let is, them see it. Yeah, don't you mentioned the, the video game stuff, um, you know, so Fallout, Elder Scrolls, you've got just a, a long list of video games that you've been been part of. And uh, how, how did that start for you? Where, where did that where was the entry point and and how did that evolve? Well, I mean, it was mostly casting. We started with a little central casting uh, for a couple of games. One of them was uh, a thing called Unreal 2. It was the first video game that I'd done, and they brought me in not to play any role. There were a number of people in this area who got full-fledged roles, and I was very jealous, but I was happy to be paid. Whenever you get a job, you're always happy to be paid. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, they brought me into the studio, and I remember it was Q Recording in Falls Church. And they bring me inside there and I am playing like 200 or so people who are all getting killed. <laughs> That's it. I spend four hours dying in every way imaginable. Okay, Wes, now you're getting lasered. Okay, Wes, this one you're being stabbed. This time you're dying a slow, painful death after getting caught in your own zipper. Really? Yeah. Okay, here we go. And you walk out of there with no voice, your horse, but... Now, basically, what I was paid to be was a Wilhelm scream through the entire right. thing. <clears throat> uh, after that, I got cast in um, Morrowind, which is the Elder Scrolls. And that was the beginning of a long relationship with um, Bethesda Softworks. Mm -hmm. And Bethesda Softworks is now ZeniMax Media and Bethesda Game Studios and one of the biggest in the world. And they're right in our area, which yeah. is beautiful. The funny thing is, is that the people that they're still hiring locally all have to go through L.A. now. <laughs> yeah, they hire us all through L.A. Uh, but, you know, still to have them be local like that and, and to be able to play. I've played over 60 some and I think it's counting different characters. The beautiful thing about video game voice acting is I can be anybody or anything. It's probably the only way my characters will ever really have abs. <laughs> Well, 
you know, that's so be it, right? Absolutely. Going. I just went to uh, uh, Awesome Con here in, in D.C., and I've been going to cons around the country, and people love to come out. And I've now been doing this for 20-some years with the video games. Mm -hmm. And time flies. You don't realize how much time flies until somebody's standing in front of you and saying, man, uh, I grew up listening to you. And you're like, you've got gray in your beard. Yes. <laughs> you know, uh, that's well, scary. That being said... On your bio, Dr. Demento. Oh, yeah. I mean, I used to listen to that when I was a kid. You know, uh, Saturday or Sunday nights it came on. I can't remember where, you know, I think it was a Sunday night, but, but syndicated in Philadelphia. It was amazing. All the pair. Yeah. I, I did a song called I Killed Santa, which was on a number of their compilations and the things of that sort, and which is very cool. And I got to work with some really cool people in town. The Pheromones uh, produced it and sang back up with me. Uh, I had uh, Mary Chapin Carpenter's band completely slumming to nice. do this. That was like a <laughs> rock and roll fantasy camp kind of thing. And and then I would do all these parody songs when I was with WHFS. I was Wild Wes back in the HFS days. I remember. Uh, yeah. And now <laughs> now that W has been turned upside down and I'm Mild Wes. But, you know, it is what it is. But I used to do the like the Klingon Bastard song. The William Shatner, Captain James T. Kirk. I do that. <laughs> um, I did the. Um, uh, 88 line 88 lines about the president's woman is as president bill clinton <laughs> I remember that. I had a good deal it's fun with that fella you know oh but, that's uh, great <laughs> no but we did all sorts of things with that and uh i've i've had a, an opportunity to live a number of fun different lifetimes between the hfs wolfman jack who i i got to work with for two years i mean that guy man to, to, to know him from like American Graffiti and listen to him and hearing him on the radio. And, mm -hmm. Ah, how you doing, baby? Are oh, you little peachy sweet? Come on, cash check a money order. And, and then to be working with him and writing comedy scripts and then sitting down with him every week. He, I'd come in with like six different comedy scripts and Wolf would be reading them and laughing on. Ah, that's great, baby. Let's do this. And performing them live live radio with all these carts and sound effects that I'm doing and doing the voices at the same time. And Wolfman Jack was there getting to know him as a friend was really cool and very strange when he passed because I felt the loss of this great, you know, icon that yes. I was, was a hero to me to begin with, but then he was also a friend. So it was like yeah. losing two, two different people at the same time. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was fantastic, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know if you know about his last night, but he no. did it on air in Washington, D.C. We were at uh, the Hard Rock Cafe, not Hard Rock, it was uh, Planet Hollywood at the time. Mm -hmm. And it, he signed the last copy ever of his book to me that night because we were going into uh, L.A. the next week with our syndication. And he comes up and he signs the book, and I, as soon as he hands it to me, I had the opportunity. You don't tell people how much they mean to you. Generally, in life, yeah. you really don't. Yeah. You don't. Um, because you're busy. You're busy. You're doing things. You're enjoying. You don't think about it. But here he handed the book to me. And I said, hey, Wolf, I just I just wanted to thank you. I, I really love working with you and really appreciate you. And, and I can't believe that we get a chance to work. And he goes, hey, man, don't go nowhere, baby. Great things are going to happen. I got a, a bad feeling something's going to mess this up. You don't go nowhere. I said, I'm not going anywhere. You don't go anywhere. Said, hey, I ain't going no place, baby. Come here. Give me some. And he gives this great big bear hug. Nobody could give you bear hugs like uh, the wolf man could. And he pulls on this big black coat that he carried, you know, big waist, long coat, black hat. And he goes walking off into the night after signing the book and giving me a big hug. And that was the last time I ever saw him. Mm -hmm. He said, he said that night he had just finished his book tour and he's on the air. And as he signs off, he's like, Hey, the wolf man's puppy's a dragon. I can't wait to get home and give Lou a great big hug, baby. I haven't missed her this much in years. And Lou Lamb Smith is his wife. Mm -hmm. So he gets, he wakes up the next morning, gets on an airplane, waking up, they say, is, you know, King, a lot of people have heart attacks in their sleep. He wakes up, no problem. He gets on the plane, planes can cause these things, no problems, gets there, drives from the plane to home. He gets out of the car in Belvedere, North Carolina at his home. 
and he sees his dog, uh, Bear. <laughs> his dog's name is Bear. Mm-hmm. And he gives his dog a raggle schnaggle. Hey, how you doing, Bear? Hey, hey, hey. And he walks up the stairs, and there's Lou Lamb Smith waiting for him at the door. She meets him at the door when he comes home. She met him at the door when she leaves. And every time when he leaves, he goes, one more time, gives her a big hug. When he gets home, one more time, gives her a big hug. That was like his thing. So he comes up to her and she walks up to him and he opens his arm and he goes, one more time. He fell into her arms and died of a oh, massive heart attack. Oh, right there. Ooh, wow. And uh, he said, all I want to do is get home. And give Lou a great big hug. Yeah. And he was able to do that. And then he was gone. Yeah. And we went down that Thursday for a funeral. And they had a local preacher there and a choir, local choir and singing and family. And we all talked and everyone knew him. And then that Saturday, they had a second funeral for him. Mm. And it was like it had been recast in Vegas. <laughs> it was the same. They actually sent me a flyer. That was like the Wolf Band Jack funeral. Wow. And we get down there to Belvedere and his backyard is full of people. The choir is no longer the local church choir. It's like the we had done a dress rehearsal, except the choir now is a world famous South African choir on a stage in Belvedere, North Carolina, in the backyard of Wolfman Jack. The preacher is no longer the local preacher. It's Robert Schuler. The big Robert Schuller preacher up there doing this and all these people that you've ever wanted to meet or see or know that new Wolfman Jack are all wandering around in his backyard between his house and this little uh, studio he has there back and forth. All this stuff. He's got a box about this big that he's in now, which to me was just so bizarre because he was such a larger than life character Mm -hmm. and a larger than life man. And to imagine that this box contained him just didn't make any sense. And they had a headstone in the backyard that says Robert Weston Smith in the middle, Wolfman Jack. And around the edges has all his little quotes. Like I was just telling you, are you little peachy sweet? Cash check a money order. All these things engraved around the edge. And they buried him right there in his backyard. I don't know what that Mm. does to the property values. (laughs) But uh, where I do recall there was a group of about, eight of us all standing around at the end after everyone else has gone and they're just passing like this spliff around yep. and everybody's having, you know, going one toke over the line, sweet Jesus for Wolfman Jack and dropping the ashes on the ashes. And uh, <laughs> so it was like one of the most surreal experiences ever. And it was so loud and so big and so him. And then after that, so very quiet yeah you know there are people in our lives that are that take up so much space Mm -hmm. and you can't imagine the world without them that once they're gone it's like there's a black hole and it just folds in upon itself it was sure yeah yeah that well you know what an incredible experience for you to work with him and to get to know him and love him and then you know be able to you know i've been very lucky i've been very lucky in that regard um and I hope that, you know, people keep saying, oh, well, that's it, Wes. Hope you enjoyed the ride. No, I hope there's a whole lot more ahead. And and guys, we haven't done anything of, of great substance yet. I just finally did something with you, Ken, recently. We never got to work on the set together at, at the same time. I know. We yeah. didn't get a chance to work on it. Les Funeraires. Or, yes. Les Funeraires. Da- yes. David Dubois uh, directed that. It was Barbie Elias who uh, produced it. And, uh, you know, they were there. It's a concept film that they're trying to raise money so they can do a bigger project with it, which would be great. So then maybe we yeah. would get an opportunity to work on a project together so i would love that i just i just have to make sure i don't die in the first three minutes Uh, yes (laughs) exactly that's usually my gig i die in the first minute and a half of any tv series i'm in so right yeah i usually get killed or shot or something of that nature yeah yeah so i'm looking at usually make me dance and then i die (laughs) dance dance dance, dan by the way by the way congratulations on uh city that is oh thank you remarkable. that was great yeah that was a, yeah. that was a good good project to work on i was i'm uh i'm pretty proud about that one you know because it's, I, I was 
Yeah. It's a, it's a project that actually I think is going to see a little bit of change. You know, it's going to cause some change in the community, not only in Baltimore, also, but, uh, you know, around the country. I also think it's going to be very much like The Wire. It's one of those shows that people are going to be watching de a decade or two from now. Mm -hmm. I still have people, because of the one appearance I made on The Wire, I still have people suddenly popping up and sending me messages decades later saying, hey, I just saw you on this thing. And I'm like, really? You, you were able to recognize me? That's cool. You know, um, but I think this is going to be a long lasting thing. And I hope it does wonders for you, Ken, because you're wonderful in it. And uh, yeah, um, it, it's it's I, I, I there were a couple of projects going around Baltimore at the same time. And I got on the other one, which was the uh, the pilot for um, uh, the spook, spook, spook by, by the, the door. door. Yeah. Yeah. And I was very excited about that until they decided to, the, the pilot wasn't going to go anywhere. Yeah. And now you ever have something like that where you, you're like, boy, I can't wait to see this work. This is going to be wonderful. And then it gets scrapped and now they're redeveloping it, which means this will never, ever, ever be seen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've had a couple yeah. projects like that and uh, it's disheartening and it's disappointing. So, but yeah, yeah. You know, well, I it's mean, it's what we do. You know, it's part of even, what we do. Even that we're, we're you're never going to see it. Wouldn't you like to have seen some of those things and seen how oh, they absolutely. turned out? Yeah, yeah. I would have loved to have seen a couple of the things that I did. Uh, you know, I did I did a pilot for Fox, and it, it was like 24. Uh, it was like yeah. the show 24. It was done by the same producers, and I played the bomb uh, the bomb uh, expert for the police department. And, I'm sure you were the bomb. Uh, man. So I would have loved to have seen that. You know, I'm looking at, at your IMDb. We actually did Sally Pachalik together. Well, we didn't oh, yes. Yep. Yeah. Now, um, you, were, yeah. you were an administrator, were you not? Uh, in that, I was, oh, my God. What was it? Yes, I was. I played. Yeah. Yep. And uh, uh, I we've, have a we've all done Veep. That. We've all done yeah. Veep. And we've all done The Veep. Wire. Yeah. Yeah. So. Maybe not at the same time, but we're all there. If you're from yes. Baltimore and you haven't done any of those things, I feel like I let down the entire Baltimore area when I never made it to House of Cards. I auditioned several times, but uh, it just how well, many? It wasn't in the cards. I That's think I question. auditioned about seven times. Seven, Dan. But it took, uh, yeah, yeah, fifteen. I think fifteen. Wow. Before I got yeah. Tw yeah, twenty eight, twenty one before I got booked. 21 18, times. 18 times for me for a uh, homicide. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they had me in a yard. I, I was just trimming a hedge, somebody's bush, some strange guy's bush in the yard. And they're going around and we're doing the shot where they walk around us. They're doing the shot straight on. They're going back and forth. They're waving the camera back and forth. By the time we were done, I left that poor guy's bush looking like Charlie Brown's <laughs> Christmas tree. I had to get out of there quick. I, I, that's not a euphemism, is it? We, we were talking about trimming a bush. What's going on right now? <laughs> he looked very uncomfortable. Yeah, <laughs> he did. He did. <laughs> That's funny. So one, of the things, one of the things I noticed um, when you you were talking about Awesome Con a little while ago, and you know, yeah. I I have a lot of friends who go to the cons and and they they get the pictures with the Marvel guys and they get the pictures with the with just the, they they buy the packages and they go get the pictures, and they they, they just love this experience. I feel like you love it as much from the other side of it that you posted all these pictures of people who came to get pictures with you. Like, I feel like you right. really appreciate having those people come out there. And that, that really shows. I love, I love seeing the fans and them hanging out. I mean, when you do video game voice work or any kind of voice work, you're in a closet talking to yourself and you don't know how they enjoy it. I love playing the games myself. I do play them. I get involved with the gamers. I like to be involved with people online and chat with them and, uh, it's a great way. I mean, if someone comes up to you and says that they loved your work or this was fun or this, was, how can you not love that? How can you not? And besides, I am as big a geek as they are. Look at this. I got a picture of myself with uh, Sylvester McCoy, uh, the uh, seventh doctor who said oh, to wow. West, the mad God from the mad doctor. And to me, that's like score. <laughs> yeah. Just a quick note to the audience. Um, if you want to see that picture, you got to watch us over on YouTube. All right. So uh, get over okay, to our yes. YouTube channel and make sure you watch that because that was pretty cool. But we also, Wes, we, we, uh, you left in your notes um, that you're going to be doing a, a Star Trek fan film coming up as well. Yeah. 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 Tell us I'm about that. 
Klingon. Uh, I've done Klingons for Star Trek video games. I actually did a scene with Patrick Stewart. I've been in two games <laughs> acting with Patrick Stewart and have never oh, met wow. him once. But oh. uh, this was one of them where I'm a – it was like a Klingon admiral, and our ships were battling each other. But this one, I'm playing a doctor by the name of Valal. Is that the picture? That is the picture. That nice. is it right there. I finally get a chance to wear the walnut head, and uh, it's it's delightful. This these people, it's a fan film, but it's a very it's was on Kickstarter. It has the biggest budget of any fan film I think ever to this point. Mm -hmm. And the Farragut Forward folks have been making these films for a while. They did the classic series, they did the animated series. Now they're going into the '80s and the films. They're doing that that era, and. Um, They've had guest stars in there from like Walter Koenig from the original Star Trek was in one of their films. Oh, nice. Stan Lee, Stan Lee, Stan the man himself did a uh, cameo. Oh, wow. So now they're slumming and they're bringing me on. So, uh, but I get a chance to play with some some cool people. John Broughton uh, has been running this. Uh, Paul Sieber plays a villain that I am uh, <clears throat> basically – enabling as a doctor um and we'll see how things go does he have honor we shall find out yeah well when when that comes out please let us know we will share it with uh, you know our audience and everywhere we can because you know we really i i really love star trek i mean it's you know it's one of my when it happens and we have a premiere you guys gotta come yeah, yeah. definitely yeah Absolutely. That, that Absolutely. makeup there was top notch. That looked like a still from from one of the feature films. That that didn't that yeah. didn't look like a, a fan film. No. Oh no, it's really cool. They're going all out. They're building sets. They've got uh, the they got some of the people who uh, really worked with costumes before are now putting this stuff together. They've got the wow. miniatures, the models. It's going to be wonderful. And I think if you look up Farragut Forward, you can find some of that on YouTube right now, and including uh, a bit of a trailer. They did a sneak peek of what this one's going to be in order to get the Kickstarter going. They did like a little three minute film. So you get a feel for what it's going to end up looking like. Uh, cool. But that that's going to be fun. I'm right now speaking to the voiceover or the video game stuff. We're doing a thing called uh, Voice of Palooza. And if you go to voiceofpalooza.com, you can uh, see what's happening. That's normally a panel we do at video game conventions where we take video game voice actors, use our characters, and bring other old movies, TV shows, songs, things of that sort to life with the different characters. Now we're using it to raise funds for the Alzheimer's Association. And we've got from the 17th through the 26th, all these days, we've got hundreds of gamers around the globe who are going to be doing different streams, all their streams, and the money is being raised to go to Alzheimer's Association. And um, the gaming community, let me, here's, the, here's a, something very interesting. People talk about gamers and they think, oh, you know, they don't have any responsibility. They sit around the house. They just, you know, they play their video games all the time. They don't care about anything. It's a toxic culture. No, these are some of the best people they really do care. And they're all out there right now sharing stories of what Alzheimer's has done to their families. You know, it's it's one of these diseases where you lose someone long before you lose them. Mm -hmm. And for the person who has Alzheimer's, it's devastating. But for the people who are there to be caretakers and who are left behind, it's even more devastating. So we're going to do our best to end ALZ and drop the gloves on Alzheimer's uh, coming up. And we've got like people like John St. John, Matthew Mercer, uh, Jan Johns is going to be there with us. We're bringing oh, out nice. uh, even some of our uh, original folks who used to do the voiceovers for Bethesda here in the area. I love people like Elizabeth Noon and Catherine oh, Fly. She's great. Yeah. David Du Bois is going to be joining us. Uh, Beautiful. Uh, Jeff Baker. Do you remember Jeff Baker? I don't remember Jeff, no. Jeff used to be – he, he was uh, on a morning show in town for years and years. It was Baker and Bird. And Jeff Baker does all these different impressions and voices but then became an actor and uh, is just – again – the one wonderful thing about keeping your finger in all these different uh, creative pies, as you guys know in town, is that you meet so many really wonderful people, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, at a time like this, when you're read, when you're you're doing something for charity and it's an important thing, 
you, 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 you can tell just what good souls these people are because they're not saying can't do it, can't be there. They're saying, <clears throat> when do you need me? Yeah. You know, you guys know Craig Seckler? Mm-hmm. Yes. I know. Craig played a character called the adoring fan uh, with this yellow hair that comes up into a point. It's like a troll doll that follows you around and obsesses. Yeah. And uh, Craig is one of these, he is one of the most put together gentlemen I've ever met. Which is why when we did a thing for this back in November, I had to buy him an adoring fan wig and make him wear it. <laughs> oh, uh, he's great. got the best hair this side of Pierce Brosnan and it, within a heartbeat because he knew that monies were going to Alzheimer's. Boom, he put it on. And I've seen him wearing it several times since, so I think he likes it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So I'm, I'm going to read this out, and I'm also going to post it on the screen. So if you're watching YouTube, uh, the – Website is www.voiceapalooza.com. So it's voice, the letter A, palooza.com. And that's going to be happening uh, June 17th through the 26th. And right. uh, it will benefit the Alzheimer's Association, which is fantastic that you guys are doing this. So. And if you look at this on either uh, Twitch or Discord or YouTube, a lot of these panels are going to be continuing on. So you'll have a chance to go back and watch them later and awesome. even donate uh, is whenever you can. And every little bit helps. Mm -hmm. Every little bit helps. Even sharing it helps. Absolutely. And we will most definitely put it on our site and uh, all the sites that we are associated with. So we, we, are, you know, we appreciate that you're out there doing that kind of stuff, man. And if we can help in any way, just let us know. We'll, we'll you guys right rock. Thank yeah, you. We'll I appreciate right that. So. Yeah. All right. Um, one of the things we like to ask, Dan, and we haven't asked him yet. We I'll let you yet. ask him. Go ahead. You ask him. You know. So obviously we're, we're a show named after a, a drink. So so what is your what is your go to cocktail when you when you go out and mm -hmm. you have a you have a drink? Uh, you know, is, is it Klingon blood blood wine or what? You know, what is your <laughs> what is your go to? Red red breast Irish whiskey straight up. Okay. All right. Fair enough. That's good. I, I used to love the uh, the Macallan, mm -hmm. but as uh, Tom Stack over at the Irish Channel one day after a Caps game when we go over there and he's like, Wiz, I know you love the Macallan, but I want you to try this. Now, it's Irish. It's different, but you'll find it's just as smooth. And I'm, what is that, Tom? It's called Red Breast. Can you bring us a couple? I say, bring us a couple. And I toss one back and I'm thinking, oh, my God, that's good. Yeah. But I don't say that. Yeah. Never, ever say that to the owner of an Irish pub after the first shot. What I say was, I don't know, Tom. I don't know. I don't know if that. <laughs> I'm going to have to try goes, another. What? Yeah. Are you crazy? No, you're, you're mad. <laughs> Bring us two more. Bring us two more. Ah, <laughs> Yes. So I waited until we each had three before I admitted it was one of the most wonderful things I tried. So Very good. Very yeah. smart. That was awesome. I I've got to admit, I was I was hoping that you were going to say that the the your favorite drink is uh, is Bud Light out of the cup, but um, <laughs> no, don't drink anything out of the cup. Well, I'm, I'm sure. telling you, I've seen where that thing has been. Yeah, that, no. all the guys who are putting their lips on it. I've seen people put their babies in there and a diaper fall off. The horses have been eating out of it. I mean, <laughs> it, it slept it slept with Ovi for two days straight, yeah. and I, he was not. I don't know what he was wearing under that blanket, but it was all chest up top. So really people are like, did you kiss the Stanley cup? And I'm like, I air kissed the Stanley yeah. cup. I fake kissed the Stanley <laughs> cup. I'm not tongue kissing Madonna either. It's uh, just not going to happen. Exactly. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so let's, let's get into it. The, so, so you've been, you've been the, the PA announcer for, for the caps for it's, it's been 20. This will be my 22nd year coming into it. 22 wow. years. Awesome. It's, uh, it's I, you know, you've had for, you know, until, until they moved you upstairs, you had the, the ice level view for, for one of the best teams of the last 20 years, you know, it's, 19 it's kind of been years. Just 19 years of watching full grown men skate into the glass face first, like Wile E. Coyote right in front of me <laughs> and, uh, you know, acting like a cat does when it hits the screen door. I meant to do that. Yeah. Uh, right. I got to hear so much international cursing down there. I learned all sorts of new things. Uh, I miss the penalty box, make no mistake about it. But to be there in the arena and to be able to call goals for Alex Ovechkin during this legendary run, uh, yeah. I'm the guy who calls his home goals, you know? Yeah. Awesome. So 
when he scores the only, the first one I called for Alexander Ovechkin. Just the first. After that, someone said, you know what? I think he likes just to go by Alex. The rest of the goals that game, and for the rest of the time, I just, instead of stretching on the Alexander, you stretch it on the O. And so you get out there, it's like, Capitals goals, score by number eight, Alex Ovechkin. Love it. Dude, chills. that just gave me the chills, and I'm not even a Capitals fan. <laughs> I'm a Flyers fan. Ah. <laughs> Ooh, well, not everybody's perfect, Ken. I know. I'm sorry. So <laughs> who's, one of my flaws. One of my flaws. <laughs> one of the things I love, and I, I know it, it, it sucks for you when it happens here because the Caps have a really bad habit of letting it happen, but I love when they're in someone else's stadium and they interrupt the goal call of the PA addresser with their own goal. You know? Yeah. They shut them up, yeah. so – I'll just keep reading too much. straight through, but it does take a little steam out of my sails. I hate yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, can you show but, us the uh, the thing you got on your hand? You didn't. Oh yeah, this this, this puppy right here. Let me bring that up here. Oh, right. look at that! Look at that thing. Jeez. That is- it's really nice, and it's got my name right there on the side. Not that uh, another million other people might be like, yeah, I'm the Johnson. That's mine if they try to take it. But it is the best ring a dude ever gave me. Thanks, Uncle Ted. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Well, the thing is you get the – I've, I've learned over the years since 2018 how to get the exact right angle. People just want to get a close-up of the ring. That's all. And they don't even want a picture with me. They're just like, if you can get a picture of me in the ring, great. pretty awesome. <laughs> Great. Yeah. That's hilarious. I love I loved the way, and I'm sure this is with the other the other teams too, but I loved that um just the way they brought you and the and the TV announcers and, and John Walton and um Joe and, Benadotti and, and, and yeah. Yeah, Craig and um and Craig only got his name on the cup. That was that made my heart happy. Um so that just that they they included the whole organization in that, and and actually, I think that had, parade to be out there at that parade, standing in front of like a million people in a sea of red, was just wonderful. And to get to go up there and unleash the fury and to announce, yeah, look at that. That was like, what a beautiful day that was. Uh, so I am very happy, happy huh? Over your left hand where that little like uh, fencing is, uh, Jack and I were getting just crowded so much in the middle there. We moved to the edge and he climbed up on the wall. So I'm right over your left hand somewhere. I hope you brought sunscreen that day. I did not. It, yeah. It, it, we, when I uh, left in the morning, when I left in the morning and they want me to do some interviews with TV stations and all that, I had to leave at about 3 a.m. And when you're leaving at 3 a.m. in the morning, the last thing you're thinking about is smearing sunscreen on your face. Yeah. However, at the end of the day, when I was the same color as my sweater yeah. and I had a burn on my face that didn't go away for, I think, two years, uh, I really regretted my decision. <laughs> yeah. I had my I, I had my jersey over my head and tied behind like a like like the, the Lawrence of Arabia, you know, like <laughs> good. Good. You got a MacGyver in life. You got yeah. a MacGyver in life to get through. It was a beautiful day. I know we went over to uh, Penn Quarter afterwards and people were doing uh, keg stands over there and going nuts and having a good time. And uh, everybody was partying like there was no tomorrow. Um, it was a, it was a crazy, wonderful time. And I think none of us even really actually believed it because up until that point, I mean, it was 18 years I'd been doing the caps before getting a championship and we're all, they won it in Las Vegas, but we had uh, an away game showing up on the big screen. And I was yeah. calling all the goals at uh, capital one arena. And at the end of the game, everybody stormed the court and the entire arena's in there singing, we are the champions together. Uh, it was amazing. It was like um, um, 10, 20,000 of your closest friends all having a big party, especially in the streets afterwards. Let me, let me just say this. If we ever win this again and you're out in the streets because we had big screens out there for those who couldn't get inside were outside the arena celebrating watching the game there as well the streets were a huge mardi gras style party and as you're driving away for the first block or two i get that 
I'm going to be very careful. But when I'm four to five blocks away, heading towards the uh, the expressways, and you're still walking in the middle of the street, drunkenly celebrating, you're just begging for a ride on my hood at that point. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Be careful with yourself. You exactly. know, keep within a certain radius. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, I know for me, uh, you're part of the, the Capitals experience and it's just been um, it's been great to do. You know, I always love when I did. Now we'll turn it over to, to PA address, you know, public address announcer Wes Johnson with, on the national broadcast and things like that. So it, it's awesome that, that you're so, so much of a part of that. Um, and the Unleashing the Fury. Being, I'm know. just a big fan, but I have a microphone. And Unleashing yeah. the Fury is one of my favorite things of all time. <clears throat> I nice. just love Unleashing the Fury. Why not? Especially when we're down, when we're down a little bit, or we need that little extra push, and the fans go scream and Unleash the Fury, and I get a chance to uncork and rant for about you know 25 seconds and get people screaming and hollering. It's a... Uh, it was much more fun when I was in the penalty box because I could turn around and bang on the glass yeah. and get people riled up. But it's still great. They turn around and bang on my glass now. Yeah. They see me upstairs and I have the people in front of me and they turn around and they see me and they're banging on the glass and uh, and they should stop that, really. <laughs> Knock it off. No. I, I got a question for you. Yeah. Can, can you give us a little, uh, you're listening to Apple Teenies, the podcast, Unleash the Fury for us? That would be. Oh, yeah. Damn. You are listening to Apple Teenies, the podcast. Get your drinks, get your passion, get fired up. It's now time to unleash the fury. Yes. Thank awesome. you. That was incredible. I love it. That you, know, is you know, we're going to use that. <laughs> let me let me try one more for you. You ready? Uh-huh. Go ahead. All right. In a world of podcasts, two men, Dan and Ken, had their apple teenies at the ready to conquer the world. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to use that, too, all the time, everywhere. That was amazing. Thank you, Wes. That was so fantastic. That was amazing. So I love I, the voice. Yeah. Don LaFontaine was oh, yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. And he was great. He was the guy on America's Most Wanted doing the announcing. I was supposed to do their sister show. And mm -hmm. when I was also supposed to meet Don. But when Don passed away, I was already working on the sister show. So they scrapped that and moved me over to the main show. Um, they called me up a few, about a month later. And said, listen, we know you're doing this. Are you able to do to sound a bit like Don? I said, I could do my very best. They had an episode of Phineas and Ferb that nice. Don had done the voiceover for. But they didn't know who the guest star was going to be. So they left one break open. And now they couldn't use it. Mm. So because I came in and in the middle of this opening thing and I said, and starring Lorenzo Lamas as Meep. That was the only thing I said, but it blends into Don LaFontaine's voice and keeps his voiceover alive. And I'm credited as additional voices, mm -hmm. which is fine by me because to be able to keep a little bit more Don LaFontaine in the world is its own reward. That's that makes me happy. And he was the man. That's that's I remember, I remember that episode. That's that's really cool. That is amazing. So uh, I'm going to bring this up real quick right here. And uh, if you want to follow Wes, you can follow Wes at, go ahead, Wes, read those for me. What do you, what do you got there? I'm on Facebook at Wes Johnson Actor. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Wes Johnson Voice. Following any person may be illegal and against the law, citizen. <laughs> That's incredible, man. That's great. So one thing we were talking about, we were talking about your work with the Capitals. Um, but obviously, uh, I think I want to say it was, was it last season? You had the chance to to head up 95 and go to Camden Yards yes. and sit yeah. in Rex Barney's old, old oh my chair. God. And, Field and of dreams, man. Field of dreams. I, I used to be a, a partial season ticket holder with the uh, Orioles, and it was just like the most mellow – thing to sit there on an afternoon out in uh i was in uh 
like on the, the first baseline and sit there and just watch a game, just, just soak in the sun. And it's one of the best parks in the, the, the world. And to sit there behind home plate with the microphone in front of you and be able to call the batters and to call the game. And, and they even brought me for lunch. They bring you your food right to you because it's uh, instead of going to a press room or whatever, they give you a box lunch. And it was Boog's Barbecue. So there I am sitting on a sunny, beautiful day at Camden Yard with a microphone in front of me calling a game eating Boog's Barbecue. Man, I mean, seriously, I really should have had uh, Kevin Costner come out and say, it's not heaven, it's Iowa. But it wasn't. It's Camden Yard. It sounds like heaven, though. I'll tell you that. It man. was that's, heaven. Yeah. It wow. was heaven. Yeah, that's amazing. It was beautiful. I, I remember when the yard first came about, and uh, back in the day when I used to get on the old rollerblades, I'd get up there and be rollerblading up around Camden Yard and going everywhere and go out to the O's games. and uh, It was just – I loved that place. I yeah. loved that place, you know, and uh, we even did uh, – over at the PSI Net Stadium, we have uh, well, what, it's not PSI Net anymore. What is it now? M and T. M and T. Yeah. M and T. M and T. Uh, I have memories over there as well. We had HF festivals there mm-hmm. when I was in the HFS. We'd go out there and Red Hot Chili Peppers playing in the in that arena and uh, going out and doing um, the replacements, pretending that was Washington D.C. Yep. Um, Fun times, man. I, I will never forget in the basement in craft services at uh, that stadium with uh, Gene Hackman walking up behind me and looking over at craft services. I'm just standing there and I'm just thinking, well, there's Popeye Doyle, you know, standing <laughs> yep. right next to me. And he's looking at all the stuff and he goes, anything good? And I said, well, there's a big pot of chili boiling over like a cauldron over there. And he looks over and he goes, ooh. Heartburn City. And then he moves away. <laughs> and it's just, I, I've i never heard of this location, Heartburn City, but I realized I've traveled there a lot. So, <laughs> and, and a great story about him during the replacements, by the way, is a couple of stray dogs got into the building. And you know, there's stray dog issues in Baltimore all the time, but a couple mm-hmm. of stray dogs made their way into the arena, uh, into the uh, stadium, mm-hmm. and made their way onto the field while... Gene Hackman was there and they start saying, don't worry, Mr. Hackman, we're going to get these dogs out of here. We're taking it. We're going to get them out to the pound. We'll get them out to the, and he said, no, 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 get them and, and, and hang on to them for me. He took those dogs home, had them flown to LA. He took those dogs, those dogs knew Gene Hackman was inside that stadium and they had to break in Mission Impossible style somehow to live their best life. And they did. That's amazing. They did. Yeah. Cheers to those dogs. That's <laughs> oh, that's incredible. That's incredible. I will say this. This is by far yeah. the longest podcast we've ever done. I love it. Oh, sorry. Well, it's a <laughs> No, it's great. It's, it's great. Don't be guys. sorry. We we love it, man. We love that you're you're telling us these stories. It's amazing. It's amazing what we're what we're hearing today. This is fantastic. It's phenomenal. Yeah. So, so I, I we got to get together uh and do a big film where we can bring all these things in. Gene Hackman, his oh, dog. Absolutely. John Waters. We got to get Selma Blair back here wearing giant prosthetic breasts. It'll be wonderful. <laughs> That'd be great. You know, whatever it is, we've got to do something. We've got to collaborate together, me, you, and Dan. And, you know, we'll get uh, whoever wants to join in the fun, you know, that we worked with in the past here and just bring them on and just, you know, have a blast. That's that's what it's all about. Let's put on a show. Let's put on a show. (laughs) Exactly. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. And one of these days, the two of you guys uh, come this fall, have to come out and hang out with me at a Cavs game. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. It just can't be a Philadelphia game because oh. I know you'll wear something else, Ken. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make it a Pittsburgh gotta, game then we can all hate on them. That's right. We got to find somebody you dislike as much as we do, and we'll bring you to that. I I have a disdain for the Bruins or the okay. Rangers. I'm, uh, you know, Rangers and the Bruins, I just can't stand them. Yeah. So it is written, so it let it be done. <laughs> yeah. Can't stand either one, so. But uh, you, hey, know, you we, must be very happy with the c- current turn of events. What's with that? New York coming this close, oh, New York, yeah. they were this close. You know, and, it was. Hey, we didn't get the breaks. 
Oh, well, too bad. <laughs> It's my uh, my college girlfriend's team. That was her team, so you know I had to deal. Oh, you know, and, you know, we broke up, so it's even double. Yeah, there you, go. you know, it's even double. You know, great now. Oh well. So you're just you're just sprinkling the salt there. No worries. Here you exactly. go, guys. Send her a Facebook message and go. Ah, it's too bad. Yeah, you're, you're very Jerry Seinfeld. It. That's a shame. Yes, that's a shame. <laughs> uh, too bad. Just wanted to point it out to you. That's a shame. <laughs> All right. So thank you for coming on, man. We appreciate you spending your time with us this afternoon and all the fantastic things. And just it's been a blast. So thank you so much. Gentlemen. Slanshava. Yes. Slancha. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. But we do have one thing, one more thing we want to ask you to do before we head out. We okay. always have the guests count us down in a three to one fashion to the closing theme song. If you could do that, that would be great. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get on your ending theme in three, two, one. Apple teenies with Ken. Apple teenies with Ken. Oh, yeah. Apple teenies with Ken. Apple teenies with Ken, oh, oh yeah, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa, Apple teenies with Ken, Apple teenies with Ken, oh yeah.